You've seen the new world record for the Nanoflare 1000Z, so will the Nanoflare 1000 Tour game and play models also give you world record playing performance? Also, this is the most expensive play racket in Yonks's catalogue, so let's find out if the Nanoflare 1000 play racket makes it still one of the best value rackets out there. This video is also sponsored by Badminton Bay. So when I said in my Nanoflare 1000Z review that I think Yonex might be going for a new world smashing record, as they always push the envelope with a Z racket. So the key question that I'll be looking at in this review is to find out if any of the innovation used in the 1000Z got trickled down into these more budget friendly tour, game and play versions. If you've not seen my review of the 1000Z, go check it out here. Visually, as per the Pro Tour Game and Play Yonex series launches, the Nanoflare 1000 follows that similar trend in getting their more budget-friendly models looking almost identically to the Top M Pro or Z version. From closer inspection, you'll find visual indicators of what model it is on the shaft of each racket as well as the frame. The 1000 Tour Game and Play have silver decals printed all over the respective frames, whilst the Pro Level 1000Z is blank. Other visual differences would come down to finishing quality as well as trickle-down innovations such as the Speed Assist bumper also being available on the Tour model but not on the game and play options. When laid side by side, you can also see the grommets around the T-joint area having a trickle-down effect, with the Z model having the best quality grommet whilst the Tour model retains that high-end semi-transparent block grommet that looked very similar. The game model then reverted to the usual looking black T-joint grommet before the play model was then fitted with individual grommets instead. Dead. Again, they were very well fitted as well as looked and feel great too, so nothing wrong with that at all. I did however find that the 1000 Play model had a few decals that weren't applied exactly straight. It won't affect playing performance, but it's always nice to have everything aligned properly. As per previous Yonex launches, only the Top End Z model is made in Japan, whilst the Tour and Game models are made in Taiwan. The Play model racket comes from China. In terms of specs, all four models carry a similar type of racket frame design, where they have a thick frame profile on the side, which is almost identical to the super popular Nanoflare 700. However, there are some slight differences across all four models. In terms of the recessed area on the racket frame, only the 1000 Play had its top half recessed, whilst the other three higher end models have fully recessed frame profiles. The Z, Tour and Game models have a pretty consistent measurement of about 12.7mm for the frame thickness around the 3 and 9 o'clock region, which then slimmed down slightly to 12.4mm around the 10 and 2 o'clock area. Surprisingly, the Play model had the thinnest frame coming in at only 12.5mm on the 3 and 9 o'clock area, but only 11.8mm on the 10 and 2 o'clock area. Continuing with the frames, the 1000Z and 1000 Tour have smaller frames compared to the Game and Play models. Yonex calls this their compact frame design and they measured about half a centimeter shorter in terms of height and about two to three millimeters skinnier in terms of width compared to the game and play models. Remember to protect your precious rackets from chips and scratches with the premium racket protection tape available on ckyw.com forward slash shop. You want to keep your rackets looking fresh all the time. Additionally, shaft diameters were pretty consistent too at around seven and 7.1 millimeters for all models and all four models have the same shaft length of 21 centimeters. For handle lengths, there are some slight differences. The 1000Z and Tour models have handle lengths of 18 centimeters, while the game model was half a centimeter down at 17.5 centimeters, and lastly, the play model had the shortest handle at only 17 centimeters. I do also want to note that the cone cap for the play model is a basic one, and once wrapped in my usual grab, it did have a larger than usual gradient from the handle to the cone. I've mentioned before that I really like the energy boost cap, which is found on the Z Tour and Game model here, but the basic cone on the player certainly doesn't impact how I play. For recommended string tension ratings, all four rackets are rated to £28 for the 4U models and £29 for the 3U models. All the rackets tested here are 4U G5 rackets and are all strung with my usual setup of your next Aerobyte at £27x29. From my string experience, the tour was pretty solid with no flex at all and the game also held up fine, albeit with some flexing. The player, however, had lots of flex during stringing and I personally would not go any higher than 27 by 29 if you really want to push the racket without damaging it. Today's video sponsor is Badminton Bay. With over 15 years of online badminton selling experience as well as serving customers from over 100 countries, Badminton Bay is a trusted source for genuine, high quality badminton equipment, supplying popular brands such as Apex, Abros, Felip, Max as well as Yonex. 
Check out Badminton Bay's effective racket selector to help you find your perfect badminton racket. You can then customize it with the strings and grip of your choice too. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced player, Badminton Bay's large range of badminton rackets will have something for everyone. Badminton Bay prides itself on its customer service and guaranteed delivery, ensuring you get the right support for your purchase. You will also get additional discounts when shopping with Badminton Bay using my discount code of CKYW, so check out badmintonbay.com today. Thank you to Badminton Bay for sponsoring this video. In terms of playing feel and performance, let me remind you that the 1000Z is super fast and feels very crisp, coming with a lot of stiffness. Hence, it's not the easiest racket to play with, but it does have that Z factor when you connect with the show properly and that gets me excited. With the 1000 Tour, I immediately felt that the Tour was head heavier than the 1000Z. This is good news for those of you who felt that the 1000Z did not have enough head weight, but that also means the 1000 Tour is also slightly sluggish compared to the Z racket. To verify this, I mounted all the rackets onto the Yonex Precision Scan Machine to measure its head weight, and sure enough, the Tour did come out slightly ahead of the Z, which verifies what I felt. Stiffness felt somewhat similar to the Z racket, but slightly different. It felt like the Z's stiffness provide a better feeling, and it's just a bit more responsive compared to the Tour, but overall, super close. The timing demands of the Tour is very similar to the 1000Z too. You will have timing issues with this racket initially as it's fast and stiff, but if you give it some time, you'll find ways to enjoy it pretty soon. Also, besides a slight difference in head weight, this 1000 Tour is probably the closest Tour racket compared to a Pro or Z series racket. So well done Yonex there. With every single iteration of the Pro Tour game and play racket launch, Yonex does close the gap in terms of feeling and that is very good to see. For the 1000 game, I'll be honest, in my first testing session, I wasn't able to feel too much difference between the Tour and the game. So that's good news for budget conscious players. Even in further testing, the only noticeable difference whilst playing is the stiffness of the shaft. It felt like the game's shaft felt slightly more whippy compared to the tours. I felt the slight flex high up in the shaft, close to where the T-joint is, but I certainly did not feel that the game was noticeably slower compared to the tour, even without having a compact head. I do have to note that I did notice the game was not as demanding in terms of timing with my shots, so that was a welcome part of game racket. Lastly, the 1000 Play. You all know I've always had a soft spot for the Play rackets as they're normally super good value rackets and this 1000 Play is no different. It does have the lightest head amongst all four rackets but that also means it's the easiest racket to play with. The 1000 Play feels whippy compared to the others, especially the Z and Tour models. So if you're someone who likes a bit of flex with your shaft, this play is a nice one for you. The whippiness did not compromise control or accuracy for me so I quite enjoyed it. I do wonder why there is a wide difference in the pricing of the Play rackets. In the UK, this 1000 Play is around 50% more expensive than the Arcsaber 7 Play. This puts the 1000 Play in a different price category and might not have been as good of a value compared to the Arcsaber 7 Play. Looking abroad, prices of the Plays are a bit more similar, but then again, that means some of the Play rackets are more expensive compared to the UK market. I do know that if I was in a market for Play rackets, knowing that I could get three Arcsaber 7 Plays for two Nanoflay 1000 Plays, players, I know which one I'd be picking. Either way, speed and stiffness are certainly no issues for these 1000 Tour game and play rackets with the 1000 Play being the least stiff and the 1000 Tour having that little bit more headway. If you're looking for a fast, speedy and stiff racket with crisp response, I think you will like these, but do note the Tour will need a little bit more learning time compared to the game and play. The game being so close to the Tour and the play being the easiest racket of the lot to play with are certainly the sweet spot for this Nanoflare 1000 series in my opinion. They are fantastic rackets, but you do have to take into account how they are priced within your region and decide which is the best option for you. And as I've really enjoyed having the extra speed playing with the Nanoflare 1000 series rackets, the real question is, do I swap them for my usual rackets? What do you think? I'll see you in the next one.